Hi everyone and welcome, this is the Apostate Prophet. I'm not outside, it's probably very easy to tell. I actually did want to go to Minneapolis for this video, but given the current circumstances, the lockdown and COVID and all that, I didn't think it would be very practical and very desirable. You might wonder why I chose such a dramatic title, but I want to use this wording to make a point. In Minneapolis, America, and in several cities, places throughout Canada, the Islamic call to prayer is heard in this month of Ramadan, in 2020. I kind of wanted to wait with this to see how the whole situation unfolds, what happens after Ramadan. But I just can't help it anymore. I just feel like this concerns me and so many others. Because I come from a country where I had to listen to the Islamic call to prayer all day. I had to wake up to that, which made me hate the mornings. I had to hear it throughout the day, even when I was working from home and when I had business conversations with people from other parts of the world. And in the background, the Islamic call to prayer is blasted. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Now some people might say, so what's so bad about that? It's just, it's just a reminder for Muslims to go and pray. But no, that's not it. The problem is with the word, the content of the Islamic call to prayer. The problem is with the fact that this is so intrusive, so offensive, so patronizing and belittling. Thirdly, it is important because, well, it is Islam to be very honest. And in Islam, the Islamic call to prayer doesn't just stand for praying. It stands for more. It stands for dominance. It has implications that shouldn't be tolerated. The Islamic call to prayer goes Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, declaring that Allah is greater or Allah is the greatest, which is probably okay if Muslims say that among each other. But if that is blasted in an interfaith environment, it just sounds a little bit offensive. But it goes on saying, I testify that there is no God but Allah. I testify that there is no God but Allah. The Islamic call to prayer isn't just a declaration that the person who makes the call makes. The Islamic call to prayer assumes to be speaking in your name. It does speak in your name and testifies for you, for the people of the environment, that there is no God but Allah. Which means if you believe in a different God, which if you don't believe in God at all, if you believe in more gods, if you believe in the Abrahamic religion, but you don't call it Allah, then the Islamic call to prayer directly challenges you and says, your beliefs are wrong. This is the only true God. This is God. Allah is God, and we worship him. It goes on saying that Muhammad is Allah's messenger, again speaking and testifying in your name. It patronizes you and tells you to hurry to the prayer and hurry to salvation. And again goes that Allah is the greatest and that there is no God but Allah. The Islamic call to prayer was used by Islamic armies, by Muhammad and by his people to declare superiority above others, to challenge their God. It was used when conquering a place. It was used when attacking the enemies. The first two lines are phrases that were frequently used to declare that this land belongs to Allah, to declare that the gods that others believe in are meaningless and that Allah will dominate over them, that Allah is better, greater. It is a declaration of war, of superiority, of supremacism. When Islam conquers a place, the place is declared sacred by announcing the Islamic call to prayer, which symbolizes that this land is now Islamic land. Islamic nations, Islamic cultures know it very well, that the Islamic call to prayer stands for this is an Islamic land, this is a land under Islam. Similarly, when a baby is born, for example, you are supposed to recite the Islamic call to prayer into the ears of the baby to make sure that this is the first thing that the baby hears, because this is how to indoctrinate the baby. The idea in Muslim cultures, in Islam, is that if the Islamic call to prayer is there, then people will be subjugated by Islam. They will respect Islam. They will remember Islam. They will come to Islam. And if they don't hear it, then Islam will lose dominance, will lose strength. For someone like me, who left Islam, but who had to hear it all day, it is simply painful, which is why I cannot sit here and just think, oh, it's no problem. People should just be able to broadcast the Islamic call to prayer over American cities and Canadian cities. No, it is hurtful. It is disgusting. It is like singing Nazi songs, like broadcasting Nazi songs in Jewish cities and neighborhoods. It is offensive. I'm not being overly dramatic. For me, as someone who lived in Turkey, it wasn't that big of a problem. I was more annoyed. I had to respect the Islamic call to prayer. If I was loud while it was playing, I was considered rude and offensive, and I could get in trouble. 
I could still leave my religion and say I don't believe in Islam, although you could easily get in trouble if you do that. I was not allowed, however, to speak about why I left Islam and why I don't like Islam, because that could go against the law. But there are so many other people around the world who live in countries where they cannot leave Islam, where they can't say I have left Islam, because there they could be executed, they could be punished, they could be thrown in jail, lynched, beaten, tortured. And imagine, we come from those cultures, come to the West, come to free countries like America and Canada, and here suddenly we hear that same dominating supremacist march over us. And our naive American neighbor says, well, it's just their religion, let them have it. Let me tell you a few things. Muslims don't have to have the Islamic call to prayer in public. They can announce it in private, in their homes. They can announce it in their places of worship. It is absolutely not obligatory for them to blast it outside in cities that are in non-Muslim lands. It's not about allowing them to do something that they have to do. It's about giving them the luxury to make a very offensive announcement of the declaration of Islamic faith, intolerant of others, in your cities, just because they want to do that. Meanwhile, you can't have church bells in Islamic countries. You can't say, your religion is false, my religion is right, in Islamic countries. You cannot go out and say, I left Islam because of this and this and this, in Islamic countries. You cannot say, Islam is wrong because ABC, in Islamic countries. But here we have to tolerate the Islamic call to prayer because of respect, inclusion, tolerance. Excuse me, no matter how you feel about it, if I was able to ban the Islamic call to prayer in public all over the world, I would love to ban it. Do it in your home, do it in your places of worship. Keep this offensive stuff to yourself. If your religion is supposedly between you and your, and your creator, it should stay between you and your creator. It shouldn't be intrusive, patronizing, subjugating everybody else. No one wants to hear your call to prayer. How would Muslims like it if we pressed for a call to reason in Islamic countries, which announces there is no Allah, there is no Allah. Allah is a lie, Allah is a lie. Muhammad was not a prophet, Muhammad was not a prophet. Don't pray to Allah, don't pray to Allah. Don't waste your time, don't waste your time. Do something useful, do something useful. There is no Allah, stop it. Of course, that would be just a dream. Muslims would never allow such a practice to happen in their countries, in their regions, in their circles. Yet somehow we have to accommodate this warlike declaration. And if you, a Western person, since we have to be so politically correct, if you want to reject and voice your disagreement, your concern, your anger about this intrusive, this vile practice, then you are not bigoted, you're not Islamophobic, you're not hateful, you're not intolerant, you're not any of those bad things. You are simply rejecting a shameless, disturbing practice of religious supremacism, as you should, as we all should as Muslims would too, if a different religious group came and did the same thing to them. Thanks for watching. I will be back very soon. Have a great day and stay away from Islam.